Hi, I'm Terry Ryan, Cold Fusion Evangelist for Adobe. Today I want to talk to you about Cold Fusion and Flash Builder. Um, now, if you're like me, you're a longtime Cold Fusion developer, you switch to Flex uh, to do your front ends, you may have run into some problems getting started with Flex. There's a couple things there. There's, there's one that, that Flex, the mindset that takes to develop Flex is very different than the mindset to develop Cold Fusion. There's also the fact that a lot of the work of connecting back-end Cold Fusion systems to Flex front-end applications is rote. It's, you know, you, you do the same remote object over and over and over again. You're just changing um, sort of the connection parameters. So uh, the Flash Builder engineers have done a great job in this version solving that problem. Uh, basically making all of this rote work that you do uh, easy. Uh, and so I, I'm going to show you the features of Flash Builder that specifically just pull in Cold Fusion services and allow you to wire them into your application seamlessly. So let me get started. So switching over here, looking at Cold Fusion, I have a simple Cold Fusion CFC. Um, you'll see that it is called Person Service uh, over here. And uh, it basically provides uh, access remote access to person CFC. Um, so if you look at person service here, you'll see that I've got all of the functions you would need to do a typical create, read, update, destroy, or CRUD operation. I've got a, a list uh, here, I've got a get, I've got an update, date, I've got a destroy, and I've got a search. So all of these methods are in the CFC, they're all set to remote so I can use them easily from Flex. So normally what I'd have to do is I have to go in, I have to create a remote object in Flex and pull all this stuff in, but Flash Builder has within it this new data services piece. So if I look down here, here's my Flash application, or my Flex application, it's completely blank. Um, and down here I've got data services. If I click on data services, it brings up this, uh, this menu here where I can choose uh, from a number of different types of data services. Uh, since this is a Cold Fusion project, I can choose Cold Fusion. I could just do a simple HTTP service or a web service or straight XML, but I'm going to choose Cold Fusion, and that's going to enable flash remoting on the back end and really a lot of, uh, a lot of speed. So now it's asking me for a CFC location. It's asking me specifically where on the disk that uh, service CFC that I showed you uh, a second ago was. So I'm going to point it to it. I'm going to say, here's team, here's services, here's person service. Um, and I hit next, and it's going to ask me for my username and password. It's fine. I'll hit enter. And now it introspected, and you see it just took you know a second to do, but what it did is it introspected that CFC, figured out all those methods, and figured out what inputs and outputs it would have. So you see here, not only does it say get, but it knows it's going to take a number ID and it's going to return a person. Destroy is going to take a person object and return void and, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to hit finish. It's going to take a second to write all the code for me. Um, but now if I look down here in data services, uh, you'll see that I've got the count, the destroy, the get, the list, the search, the update methods all wired up for me already. Not only that, but it also looked at the data types and looked at person and looked at first name, last name, person ID, username. So it got all that information from, uh, from Cold Fusion and just wired it all up for me. So how would I now show this? This is the, the next step. So I'm going to take a data grid. I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to pull it out and you'll see that it's just a standard data grid. It's got uh, three columns that are completely empty. There's no data bound to it, so it just says column one, column two, column three. Now here's where this gets crazy. See down here in data services? I'm going to take a list and I'm going to drag it to the data grid. And when I do that, I snap it. It gives me a little dialog box. I just take the defaults and boom, there you go. Uh, the data grid has now rewrote itself to be the columns from the, the service. So person ID, username, first name, last name. But more than that, if I hit compile, and it takes a second. There you go. You'll see that there I am with that data grid uh, completely, um, completely wired up with data. So there's the other members of my team. There's me. There's Ryan Stewart, Kevin, Lee, et cetera, et cetera. So I've now wired up a data grid with data without writing any code, which is pretty cool. But I don't want to just show that data. I want to manipulate it. I want to edit it. So normally what I do is I build a form and I build it piece by piece. I create uh, inputs, drag them on, attach them to the data grid. But the engineers for the Flash Builder team have really just made that easy for me. So I'm going to go here to Generate Details form, 
hit OK, and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to give me a number of options. I'm just going to take the default. I'll hit Next. And you'll see that it says, which elements do I want in my form? And again, I'm just going to take the default, so I'll hit Finish. And now you'll see there it dropped that form on top of the data grid, which is suboptimal, but uh, I just move it over, and there you go. So I've got person, username, first name, last name, all ready to go in this form. And in fact, if I hit Compile, you'll see that when I click on these elements, that form is populating. And not only that, but I can go over here, and I can edit it. So I can change me to, from Terrence, uh, my, what my mother calls me when she's angry at me, to just Terry. Uh, I hit Submit, and it changes it in the data grid. Now that's cool, but you'll notice if I hit Refresh, um, that data hasn't changed. So I changed it in the data grid, but I didn't change it back in the database. Um, so that requires one more step, and will require the only line of code I have to touch in this entire, uh, this entire demonstration. So there's my Submit form. And right down here, I've got an update method, right? That update method will update the database. So I take this update method, and I still can't get over how cool this is, but I'm just going to drop it onto that button. And when I do, it's finally going to prompt me to write a little piece of code. Now, it's asking me, what, per, what, what is this object that I'm going to pass back to the server? And in this case, it just, happen, it just so happens that it's person, right? Because um, up here, uh, this is the piece that the data grid is talking to the form. It's person. I just say that same person is the same thing. I hit save, and then when I compile, um, you'll see here I go through again. I'll hit Terrence, and again, I'll change me back to the more or the less formal Terry. Hit submit. Now when I hit refresh, it goes back out of the database, pulls the info in. It's been changed to Terry also on the database. So there you have it. I just wired a cold fusion back end up to a flex front end. Uh, with just a couple of mouse clicks and one set of variable assignment and code. Um, it's really that easy. It's really that simple. If you want to learn more about doing this yourself in your own projects, go to the Learning Flex and Cold Fusion section of the Adobe Developer Connection. Thank you.